Hello out there, and today's video is going to be a little bit interesting because today we are doing a heat anno mini tutorial and um, on screen demonstration. I actually just finished uh, doing the previous take of the video where I anodized this clip on camera and that worked out pretty well but I left a lot of information out that I wanted you to have so we're refilming and in this video I'm going to, um, to re-anodize my Griffin tool. All right, so this is titanium, so I'll do this on camera in just a minute. It's going to be interesting trying to do this on camera uh, because I usually do my anno out at the dining room table, which really pisses off my wife, but uh, it's a lot easier to film in this uh, quarters here, so it is a little more confined, but we'll, uh, we'll make it work and see if we can get all this stuff on camera for you. All right, and one thing I need to say, though, when it comes to a heat anno tutorial, the definitive video, the be all end all, I think, comes from DocP91B, which I will link to down below. Definitely check out that video. Um, it's been featured in like some online publications as being one of the best ones to watch when it comes to uh, to trying to learn how to do this. So check him out. It's also the video that got me into his channel, which is another one of the really really good knife and gear channels on YouTube. All right. So again, link to that is down below. All right, so what I am gonna do though to try to make this a little bit different is after I heat this guy up and get some color on him, I'm gonna go through some of these other knives, some of the results that I've had, some of the materials I've worked with, and give you a little bit of advice and, and some tips that I've learned along the way. Uh, you know, some things to do and some things to avoid, maybe some knives that wouldn't be the right one to try to anodize, and also some information when it comes to like stainless steel versus titanium, all that kind of stuff. All right, so the materials that I'm working with, the, the tools, I've got my Dremel blowtorch, model 2200, as you can see there. Um, I've had this on camera before, and uh, I'll say again what I said about it before, that it is a good one and it works just fine for me, but one thing that you'll notice when I have the heating implement engaged, I have to keep my thumb, I have to keep my thumb on the trigger the whole time to keep it engaged. So if you're shopping for uh, for tools for this, you might wanna find one that keeps it locked on so that you don't have to constantly have it uh, pressed down with your, with your thumb because that can be pretty uncomfortable and some of these sessions do take a while. All right, and then lifting up the camera, the other stuff that we're working with, you can see Windex, paper towels, and then I use like an old baking sheet to put the hot material into and let it cool. All right, so, um, hopefully not scorching the kitchen table any more than I usually have to. And here at my desk, it should be uh, easier to avoid that. And like I said, won't upset my wife. So, all right, what we have here is a Griffin tool. I've had this on camera. I've anodized this before. And that's one tip that maybe you don't know that you, you should, is that you can re-anodize something. All right, so if you polish it or, you know, just or sand off the, the anno color, you know, there's still some color on the backside here, but you can sand off the color and then re-anodize. So if you see a little bit of wear or if it gets scratched up or if you just don't have the results that you want, you can try again, which is pretty important to know, you know, so it's not the end of the world if, uh, if things get messed up a little bit. All right, so what I always do is you want to keep any kind of contaminant off of whatever you're anodizing. All right, so um, when you're thinking about like knife frames, the really big thing to keep in mind is anything that's assisted opening that has like, um, let's say like any kind of lubrication in it or anything that builds up dirt, any nooks or crannies, that stuff will heat up and scorch your, um, your material that you're trying to anodize. And then you'll get spots that I'll show you in just a bit. All right, and you definitely don't want those spots. You want the, the cleanest, most consistent color that you can get, right? So with this, we're not gonna be really picky about um, what color we get or what we're really going for, okay? So what I use is, uh, is a set of pliers, as you can see here, and then I just jump in and heat it up. You wanna remove the Windex, which is just that like ammonia base just to get it clean, and um, I think nail polish remover works as well, but I like having the Windex. And then um, I'm going on like the lowest setting and just get going. And this really is not easy to do on camera, but I don't know how long this will take. That pocket clip that I did took about 30 seconds. 
this one will probably take a little bit longer because thicker material um, you know heats different speeds all right and then when you're heating something up I mean the more that you wave and the distance that you have obviously will will impact the the speed that it heats up and when you're going you're going to be going from just the regular steel color to to bronze and then to purple and then to blue and there's some color sort of in between that can pop out well if you really want to get those colors and you really want to have the opportunity at control then you know just a direct heating like this you know just focus zoomed in and just getting a whole lot of heat on one spot really isn't going to be the way to go what you'll want to do is just move around really consistently and often in order to uh, to get the best color popping out that you can and I'm starting to see a little bit of bronze here at the edge so I'm not sure how long this is going to take um, but it does take a little bit of, uh, of time you know depending on the heating implement that you use I'm sure there are some torches that are a lot hotter than mine that that uh, that get it done a lot quicker if you see any kind of flame jumping up what that is is it's uh, it's catching some kind of um, something basically that's dirty you know some part like and anytime you see a little bit of flame there's like a, something dirty that's catching fire or you know just some kind of like particle that's on there that shouldn't be there you know so you can see right there at the bottom there's something down there that's <clears throat> heating up probably where it's like uh, scratched up so uh, when it comes to this not really gonna be a big deal because uh, I'm not worried about that but Right now we're gonna focus and really try to get as much heat here at the top as we can so that we can get some color jumping out. And here we go. Really jumping out with the purple and the blue is about to come. Probably blocking the camera, sorry about that. All right, so that's all that we'll do on camera. So let me move this over. So put it in there, as you can see, grabbing my Windex, cooling it down. And you can hear the Windex is like boiling, smoking. It does get very hot. It does stink. All right, so we'll give that a minute to cool, and while we do that, let's talk about some other things. So let's talk about coatings. All right, um, when you have a coating on a knife, like a bead blast finish, let's say here's a Kershaw Emerson CQC6, and we're dealing with this, and this is stainless steel, not the titanium that I just anodized, so getting good color on this will be a lot more difficult, especially if you want to go beyond bronze. But any kind of coating, or finish that isn't like a nice clean polish, any kind of substance on the on the, the frame or whatever you're anodizing itself is going to stop the colors from jumping out as much as they could. All right, so this, this color or the color that you wanna get on here will never get beyond bronze at all if you try to anodize you know, through this finish. That said, that works out perfectly for me because uh, bronze is what I usually go for when I've done like two of these knives in the past. It works out really well. Uh, same thing with the CRKT Polar. Uh, you do have a little bit of a finish on this frame. And so if you're looking for a bronze color, it works out nicely. But if you wanna to try to go for a, a brighter color, like a purple or a blue, you'd have to sand this down and polish it up and get it as clean as possible to get the best expression of the colors that you can. And there's no guarantee there. And again, when it comes to titanium, which I'm gonna bring the, uh, the Griffin tool right back out. When it comes to titanium, you have a little bit more time you know, when you're going from bronze to, to purple to blue, you have a little bit more time at each color for you to, uh, to get the result that you want. You know, you can see some purple and blue and some bronze here, and it's not consistent because, you know, obviously doing it on camera isn't really that easy. But uh, it'll sit at the bronze color for more time before it transitions to purple and blue. So you can, you know, depending on, on how you sweep with the, uh, with the flame and how up close you are, you can control with experience, you know, what color you get better. Stainless steel, not so much. 
So when you're dealing with stainless steel, you know, you really have to be careful and there's no guarantee that you're not going to go from blonde, excuse me, bronze to, uh, to blue just like that, right? It'll pop right out. And, and so any consistency in color will be a lot more difficult. So sometimes for me, at least having the, uh, the, the coating here, which actually controls it a little bit works for me. And so that's what I've done with the, um, the CRKT Polar and with the, the Emerson model in the past. Another good example of that is uh, this Kershaw Pico, which I've anodized a couple of those in the past. And you can take a look. Here is just the, uh, the bead blasted, I think, or whatever the coating is on the finish. It gives you this bronze, and it's never going to go beyond bronze. It'll get darker, like in this spot right here, but it'll never really get blue. It'll scorch before that. You know, as you can see um, on this side, I removed uh, that finish and polished it a little bit more and it looks different here than say it would without the anno on this side. So just something to keep in mind that the way that you tinker with it really will affect your results um, once, you, once you get it set up. Now looking at other results, let's look at uh, a couple titanium pieces that I've done in the past. The Kershaw Dimension is another one that had a coating that you have to remove that coating in order to get color. You know, and so that worked out really well, had a good measure of control. And you can see that um, that, you know, I was able to get blue to purple to, to bronze to purple and back to blue on that. Now, what you can see is sometimes those colors fade. If you take either Windex or nail polish remover and get it on a paper towel, you can wipe and get those colors to really pop again. All right. So any kind of like, um, like fingerprints or oils that will like cover up and stain that anno. You know, if you can refinish it basically and just bring life back into it and you can see, you know, how vibrant that looks versus how, how it did about one minute ago. All right. So and keep that in mind just because it starts to look uh, a little bit dull doesn't mean it is. All right. So that's one way to maintain it. Pretty cool there. All right, so with this ZT, this is the first example though of um, the scorching effect that I wanna show you. If you look in this corner here, you can see these white dots. They're blemishes. And they're blemishes because the, the frame just wasn't perfectly clean when I did this. I did this on the fly, just trying to get uh, some color on it and make it my own really quickly. This is a user and one that I'm trying to beat up actually. And so, um, yeah, I, I really didn't, didn't really focus on it and keep it as clean as I should have. And so you have these spots here that, uh, you know, some kind of dirt just sat onto the, onto the frame. And when I, when I anodized it, it scorched onto there and you lose the color. And so you have these like white blemishes, you know, and that's also happens if you go from blue up, there's more right here. You know, once you go beyond the level of blue, it turns to get, to get like white and yeah, it'll scorch it and do that quicker when you have some kind of like contaminant on the actual frame itself. So what I could do, uh, if you were thinking this, what I could do is sand this thing down and re-anodize it, right? Well, this is a good example of why I wouldn't want to do that because you can actually anodize through a stone wash. So this titanium is stone washed, you know, from the factory. And so I anodize through it. So if I were going to, re to remove the anodization in order to try it again, I would also lose the stone wash, which I don't want. So, I mean, maybe a project in the future where I could re-stone wash it myself, but you just have to think uh, about that kind of stuff when you are working on it. And from here, you can really see that blemish, you know, here. Yeah, it's whatever. Um, still looks cool, but it's one of those things that if you're trying to get a very nice piece, you probably don't want to have that on your knife. All right, a couple more things to talk about uh, when it comes to this. And let's take a look at this Griffin one more time actually first. You know, you can see the color just jumped out. Really easy, really easy to get it with titanium. I could have polished this a whole lot more and gotten a better expression of the color, but worked out pretty well. Here is a pocket clip that I did in a previous take of the video and it took like literally 15 seconds to get to blue and purple. So again, just be really careful when you're anodizing because uh, you know you will lose that, that copper look very quickly. So what kind of knives do you not wanna do? Well, if you don't want to remove finish and coatings and stuff, that would be one. 
But two, here is a scale for a CRKT amicus. All right, this is one that I'm working on right now. This is definitely not a knife that you want to anodize. And here's why, right here, these cutouts. So the thickness of your scale, your titanium, your steel, whatever you're anodizing, is really going to dictate how long it takes to achieve color and how the color transitions. You want as even as possible a, 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 a frame or whatever it is you're working on, you want it to be as even as possible so you can get a consistent and even color. These cutouts make the steel thinner here in these spots. And so when I tried to anodize one of these in the past, it went from bronze to purple to blue over here just fine. But in the middle, it went to blue very quickly because it's a lot thinner. And so it was impossible to get a very consistent look. So make sure when you have your knife apart and you're looking at it, you're anticipating this kind of stuff because it's a real pain to, uh, to start working on it. And then all of a sudden realize, man, I can't get this done. You know, my level of expertise, which is not high, um, is, is not capable of getting a consistent color on a scale like this. Just can't. Just can't. I'm sure there are other ways to anodize it and get a good color on it, but, but with the heat implement that I'm using and the way that I'm doing it, I don't know how that would be possible because there would always be just that thinner spot that's gonna, going to express different color quicker. All right, so that's basically all the stuff I wanted to share with you guys, uh, the stuff that I wanted to show you today. Um, hopefully it was helpful. Hopefully it was uh, some information that maybe other tutorials didn't show you. So, you know, there's still something to get out of this. Um, oh, one other thing, I guess, just in terms of the way that I do stuff. So if I have the pliers on this side, after I heat Anno 1, I'll like cool it, flip it, and then do the other side, you know? So that's what I'll do right now to finish this one up. But uh, yeah, that's really the last thing that I have to, uh, to share with you. So any questions, specific questions about doing this, let me know down below. Uh, if I don't know the answer, I will try to help you find it because um, chances are uh, I would like to know as well. But any other questions, comments, complaints, suggestions, as always, down below is where to reach me. Thank you for your time. Hopefully this was uh, informative for you and I look forward to talking with you again soon. Take care.